Awesome to have you guys. Come on. Are you glad to be in God's house today? So good to have you. Well, Larry was a photographer for the New York Times, and he was scheduled to meet a plane on a runway to take him to his next job. Hit it. He gets on the plane. He says to the person, we've got to go. The pilot takes off, and soon the plane is in the air. Okay, said Larry, fly low over the trees so I can take a few pictures. What do you mean, asked the pilot. Larry looked at the pilot and answered, I need to take some pictures for the New York Times, so please, there's a long pause. For the pilot asked with a shaky voice, you mean you're not my flight instructor? Hey, would you go ahead and stand to your feet really quick? Come on, Hicksville, stand up. Comac, stand up. Let's start today's service with a declaration. Are you guys ready? Yes. Uh, it's all three of you. Are you guys ready? Yes. All right, here we go. Say this after me. Today I declare, today I declare that, I that I am what God says I am. I declare, I declare my life will become all God designed it to be. I declare my future is bright. My faith is strong. My hope is high. My destiny secure. I declare this is my day. In Jesus' name, amen. Come on, give God a big old shout. Come on, you can do really good. Oh, that's just a hand clap. I say give Jesus a shout today. Come on, church. Why don't you turn around and give someone a fist pump right now. Let's go ahead. Give someone a fist pump. Hicksville, just... Find somebody, give them a fist pump. If you want to add an explosion, you can add a little explosion to that. Well, we're glad you guys are here. Today we want to challenge you guys to see yourself the way that God sees you. I'm not sure about you, but I know that I personally struggle with my version of me and God's version of me. Anybody else? That there are ways that you see yourself and there are ways that God sees you, and often they are in conflict with each other. Too often we see our failures, our shortcomings, our sins, our struggles, and our challenges instead of His grace, His forgiveness, His freedom, His favor, His blessing, His mercy. If we can learn to see ourselves the way God sees us, we will live life with a greater smile, a greater anticipation of what God wants to do in and through our lives. You see, the truth is many people in the Bible face this dilemma. Gideon tried to resist God's call. Sarah and Abraham literally laughed at God's plan and purpose for their life. Jeremiah offered God every excuse why he could not do what God had called him to do. See, every person who desires to excel in this life will always be faced with doubts. But hear this today. You can doubt yourself, but do not doubt your God. Don't put confidence in who you think you are. Put your confidence in what God says you are. And God has so many things in his word that he promises. Scripture declares, all the days planned for me were written in your book before I was one day old. God has good plans for you, church. And it's so hard sometimes to see those good plans when we're looking at ourselves through our own perspective. See, the plans that God has for your life predate your birth date. That means you can outlive anything that hell throws at you. If God had promised something powerful in your life, it will come to pass. You hearing this today, church? Whatever God has promised, you can take it to the bank. It is signed, sealed, and it will be delivered to you. You see, the truth is before you were born, before you were even conceived in the belly of your mother, you were conceived in the mind and heart of God. How powerful is that? I mean, that messes me up to know that this God who created the heavens and the earth, he made me. He made you. And nowhere in the Bible do you ever find that God said, oops. It's just not there. He never makes a mistake. He never made an error. He never loses a battle. His plans and promises always come 
to pass. Here's what some of those plans are for you. God says in his word he has plans for a hope and a future. He has plans to watch over you. God has plans to direct your steps, to keep you safe and secure, to listen to you, to guard and protect you, to make you succeed. And then I love this promise in 3 John 1 verse 2. He has promises to bless your life. How many want to be blessed today? That it's all part of the plan of God. If you want to be blessed and you want God to bless you, he's saying in his word, I have plans to bless you. God has put you on his list of blessing and favor. Man, that's a powerful thing. See, we all can work hard to try and be blessed, but when we trust God, we just are blessed. We just know he's got good plans for our life. He has dreams for your marriage, your children, your skills, your church, and your life. And all we have to begin to do is see our life the way God sees it. But too many of us, when we look in the mirror of our lives, we see the wrong image. We see the wrong person. We see the wrong picture in our minds. Church, hear me today. The way we often see ourselves is not always right. How many of you got up and looked in the mirror today? Some of you, it looks like you didn't. <laughs> but you get up every day and you look in the mirror, right? I say this often. I get up in the mirror. I get up in the mirror. I get up and go into the restroom. I look in the mirror. I say, I'm the best looking person in this room. <laughs> I'm the only person in the room. But I say that why? To encourage myself. Because sometimes we've got to remind ourselves not of what we are, not of what we look like, but of what God says about us. You hearing this today, church? See, so often we're looking in the mirror of our lives and we're seeing the wrong thing. There are many of us that when we get up in the morning, what we do is we look in the mirror and we see this. We see the mask of shame and we're embarrassed and discouraged by the things that we have done. We walk with that shame. When we go to work, we're ashamed. Have you ever met someone that's ashamed? They don't even look you in the eyes. They're always walking like this. About 90% of New Yorkers. Walk like this. It's shame. Shame governing our lives. And we see that so often when we look at our lives. There's a lot of people, this is why the church is so important. There's a lot of people that go through life feeling unhappy. You ever been down? You ever been discouraged? You ever gone through life thinking no one cares? What's the reason to smile? My life has been so bad, so much dysfunction, so much hurt. I'm just going to wear this mask. I'm unhappy. And I'm going to let everybody know about it. I'm going to post it on social media. I'm going to Snapchat it. I'm going to YouTube it. I'm going to Facebook Live it. I'm going to let everybody know I am not happy. And they walk around with that mask. There's a lot of people today that feel this way. I'm just ugly. I'm unattractive. See, I, I learned this a long time ago. Beauty is only skin deep, but ugly is to the bone. There's a lot of people who look good on the outside. Come on, church. But they ain't got it right on the inside. Beauty is what you are on the inside, not the outside. Thank God you're pleasingly rotund. Thank God you got to paint the barn. Thank God you got to hit the treadmill and get out there. Thank God. Because it doesn't matter what you look like out here. It matters what you look like on the inside. Stop going around saying you're ugly. God made you beautiful. Every single person that God created is beautiful. But then there are others who go through life and they have so much disappointment, so much overwhelm that they are now at a point of, I'm just broken. You ever been there? You ever been so beat down? Life has just kicked you left and right and you feel broken. It's not how we could see ourselves because the beauty of God is he takes broken people and he makes something beautiful out of their lives. He's the only one who can take a broken life and put the pieces back together again. And then there's others who go around and they wear the mask of, I'm an addict. I'm addicted to this. I'm addicted to that. And this is all they ever see in their life. Friend, you are not what you see about yourself or say about yourself. You are what God says about you. Addiction is something you do, but it is not who you are. You are God's child. That means I'm not going to go around wearing that mask. And I found a lot of people go around with the mask of insecurity. They see themselves, I can't do it. 
I could never get that raise. I, that person would never say yes to me. There's no way. I'm insecure about everything in life. You ever met somebody you have to walk on eggshells with? Come on, Hicksville. You ever met somebody that you're in the room and you're like, okay, watch what you say. Because if you say the wrong thing, that person is going to light you up like an atom bomb. Right? I think we've all met people like that. If you haven't, you probably are that person. Insecure. We go through our insecurities and we see our life through our own personal insecurities and then we get opportunities in our life. God opens up doors, but we won't walk through them because we don't feel qualified. We don't feel like we're worthy. Like, why would God ever use me? Why would God ever open up this door of opportunity for me? And all we see is I'm not qualified. I'm not qualified to marry that girl. I'm not qualified for that job promotion. I'm not qualified for God's favor and God's blessings because we go through and we declare over and over too often, I'm just not enough. I'm just not enough. I'll never be enough. I was always told growing up, I don't know what you're going to do in life. I don't know what you're going to become. You're worthless. You're garbage. Some of you, I know I'm talking to you today. You heard that from parents or family members or friends or students that you went to school with, and they just picked you, picked on you all the time, and now you're walking through life as an adult saying, I'm just not enough. And when you don't feel like you're enough, you will always feel like a failure. Like, I can't do anything right. I remember when I was in a band way back in the day. I can't tell you the name of the band because it's not appropriate for church. <laughs> but it was a punk rock band. And I remember writing this one line, my life seems like a waste of time. I can't do anything right. I've screwed up. I've messed up again. I keep on losing this fight. Boy, as an 18-year-old kid, I wrote that song. My life seems like a waste of time. Are you kidding me? I felt like I was a failure. Probably because there were times I was told I was a failure multiple times as I was growing up. And that's why I felt unloved. Anybody ever felt unloved? Like your heart has been broken? Like it's been stepped on and abused and you see yourself there. Nobody wants me. Nobody cares about me. I'm just not lovable enough. You know how lovable you are? God loved you so much, he sent his one and only son to die on the cross for your sins so that you can have eternal life in heaven. Throw off the mask of being unloved. You have been loved by God. God will never love you any more or any less than he does right now. He loves you completely and thoroughly and never allow your past to be what you see when you look at yourself. Because your past is not part of your future. Your past is not part of your destiny. Yes, it has shaped you. Yes, it has caused you to be some of the things you are and some of the challenges you are. But your past is behind you. Your potential is in front of you. See the potential God sees in you. See what he sees. And this is one I think many of us struggle with. Fear. Boy, have you ever been afraid? I mean, like, really afraid like you didn't know what was going to happen next so much fear that it crippled you and kept you from moving forward and doing anything i heard this expression many years ago about fear fear is false evidence appearing real the enemy will put fear in you and cause you to want to wear that mask of fear to keep you where you are. Church unleashed, do not see yourself that way. Do not wear any of the masks that keep you from where you are. Choose to wear a new mask. Choose to put on the mask of I am God's child. I have been appointed and anointed as his son or daughter. Royalty runs through my blood. I am not a screw up. I am not a mess up. I am not insecure. I am not a failure. I am not unloved. I have been made in the image of almighty God. I'm not going to see myself the way everybody else sees me. I'm going to see myself the way God sees me. 
Some of us today, we're going to have to take off some of the masks of how we see ourselves when we look in the mirror of our lives. We're going to have to pull those away and start walking around with pride and say, I have been made by my creator God. This God who formed the world formed my life. You are, my friend, the apple of God's eye. You are, scripture says, his priceless treasure. Do not see yourself stressed. See yourself blessed. Do not see yourself sad. Start seeing yourself into being glad. Don't see the negative. See the positive. God has made you on purpose for a purpose. But you might never experience that purpose if you keep seeing yourself the wrong way. Today my prayer is that we'd see ourselves the right way. And that's why it's important to see ourselves through the lens of God's word. This is powerful. Because God's word is our roadmap for life. But it also is like a spiritual x-ray machine it allows us to see within our lives things that we can't see on the surface. The Bible is there to guide us, govern us, correct us, and direct us. And when we look to the Word, when we look to God's Word, we will discover everything He says about us. I love this scripture. God said this, I have chosen you from all the nations of the earth to be my own special treasure. Come on, look at somebody and say, I am God's treasure. Come on, find somebody real quick. Come on, Hicksville. Find somebody right now. I am God's treasure. Now look at your wife and say, see, babe? <laughs> I am God's treasure. You're God's treasure. You know what that means? God sees value in you. When you cannot see the value in yourself, God sees value. There are going to be times when you don't see your own value, your own worth, and others don't even see it. But you've got to remind yourself every single day, I am God's treasure. I'm worth something. See, the truth is your value is not in who you are. It is in whose you are. It's not in who you are. It is in whose you are. See, if we try and find our value in who we are, we will always be disappointed. But if we choose to see and find our value in whose we are, we are God's, we will always see our value, the value of his son, Jesus. See, the truth is all of us have to get to that place where we see that value. See, don't let others rob your value. I don't know if you've ever been devalued by somebody. Anybody? Anybody? Somebody said something about you, did something to you, stabbed you in the back, walked all over your heart, beat you down, dumped you by email. I was there. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever been there. But every time you have a broken heart, it's almost like there's a value that you feel you've gone down. That's why you got to see yourself for whose you are. Not who you are, but whose you are. Let me remind you today of something. You matter. Somebody needs to hear this today. You matter. You've been going around looking in the mirror of your life with some of these masks on and you feel like, I just don't matter. Friend, hear this today, loud and proud. You matter to God, you matter to us, you matter. Your life is worth something. It has great value. See, you are valuable to God. God declares your value. What does he say about you? You're the apple of his eye. You will be the first and not the last. You are an overcomer, a victor, and a champion. And that was all bought with the precious blood of Jesus. See yourself through the lens of God's word. Scripture declares this. How precious are your thoughts about me, O oh God. They cannot be numbered. Does that move anybody today? That moves me. Knowing that God's thoughts about me, I can't even count. God, you think this about me? Yeah, but so-and-so said this about me. Irrelevant, God said this about me. I'm always going to focus on what God says about me and about us. God values you. I mean, let that sink in today. God values you. Yes, your past may be littered with pains, embarrassments, failures, disappointments, broken relationships, and sin, but not one of those things negates the fact that God loves you, church. Even the way you see yourself will never negate the reality that God loves you. 
That's like an emerald. Bam! God loves you. Bam! I mean, does it get any better than that? You are loved by God. You are valuable to God. Your value does not come from a person. Your value comes from your creator. Who sets the price on a creation? It's the person who made it. Why are certain watches more expensive than others? Because of who made it. Why are certain products that you buy more expensive than others? It's because of who made it. Who made you? The creator of heaven and earth. The one who was and is and always will be. He is the one who sets the value on every human being. And he has set your value very, very high. See yourself through the lens of God's word. He sees you so powerfully that you can't even count how great God's view of you is. You're valuable to God. That's why you have to understand your life is not an accident. You matter to God. Your life is not the result of a chance or an accident. You are the result of a loving God. Scripture declares this, your hands made me and formed me. You know what that tells me? God took time on you. That before you were even born, God said, all right, what kind of ears do I want to give Nick? What kind of nose do I want to give Vasi? Come on, what kind of physique do I want to give Todd? Still got to work on that, God. God took time on you. He formed you. He created you. He made you. He took time. Everything about you, your hair or lack thereof, your size, your height, your eye color, your DNA, all put together by God. Your personality. I've got personality. We've all got it. Everything about you was hardwired by God before you were even born. Why? But yet so often, what do we do? We see ourselves through our own eyes instead of through the lens of God's word. You are not an accident. You were purposed by God to have meaning and destiny. I love what God told the prophet Jeremiah. I knew you before I formed you in your mother's womb. Before you were born, I set you apart and anointed you. Church, you have been set apart by God. And you have been anointed by him. If you're set apart and anointed, that means you've got purpose. Come on, I've got purpose. You've got purpose. Every single person in our Comac facility today, you have purpose. Everyone at Hicksville, you have purpose. Those watching online today, you have purpose. And if we can recognize that all of us are valuable and all of us have a purpose, we will say, I'm not an accident. I am on this planet for something. I am called to do something. God designed you. I love this Two words in that passage. I, well three, I knew you. He created a blueprint for your life. God designed you. He thought through everything. But the enemy is going to try and convince you that you are nothing more than a collision of molecules without purpose. But you, my friend, are more than that. You have been made for a mission, created for a calling, framed for a function, and designed for a destiny. There is nothing, I repeat, nothing average about you, church. You're not normal. Somebody say amen to that one, right? I'm not normal. You're right. The Spirit of God lives in you. That's what makes you above normal. See, here's what God promised. The number of my days he will fulfill. That simply means God will get you where he wants you to be. No matter what you go through, you will get there because you matter to God and your life is not an accident. Don't miss this principle. What you think is only attacking you is actually advancing you to your destiny. 
Some of us, we get stuck in our rut. And we're going through the motion. We think, oh, the enemy's attacking me one more time. When the enemy attacks, God is using it to advance you, to mold you, to shape you, and to prepare you. Joseph, he was the youngest of his brothers. At 17 years old, God gave him a dream, a dream that he would be put in charge of a region. He made one major mistake. He told his brothers about it. They were not happy. He told his parents about it. They were not happy. Joseph's brothers decide, well, the best option for our brother who thinks he's going to be all this in a bag of chips is let's sell him into slavery. How many are thankful for your siblings today? Wow. Messed up family. Can you imagine what Joseph is thinking? He's now in the pits. He has this dream. God, you said I'm going to rule and reign. You promised to elevate me. You said I would lead, and now I'm stuck in this pit? My brothers threw me in here? Remember this, church. There is always a process to God's promises. There's always a process. God will use whatever he must to get you where he wants you to be. Jump ahead. Joseph now ends up in Potiphar's home. Now he's accused of making moves on Potiphar's wife. This guy can't catch a break. He's thrown into prison. If I was Joseph at this point in the story, I would have thought, God, are you serious? Like you tell me I'm going to do this? I end up in the pit? Now I get falsely accused that I'm making advances on this ugly old woman? And now I'm in prison? I'd be thinking to myself, there is something wrong with this story. Fast forward, Joseph, though, interprets Pharaoh's dream. No one else could do it. He tried to consult everybody. No one could help him out. Joseph now is propelled to lead all of Egypt. What Joseph could have seen was only attacking him was actually advancing him. God will use anything and everything to get you where he wants you to be. I love what the scripture says, so be content with who you are. Don't be somebody else. Be content with who you are. And don't put on airs because God's strong hand is on you. Do you catch that, church? When you know that you know that you know that God's hand is on your life, you don't have to be anybody else but you. I am glad I'm the only me that there is and the whole world is thankful to. I am glad that I'm the only top bishop because what that's, I made you specifically for a purpose. He goes on, he'll promote you at the right time. The challenging thing about this is his right time is not always the time we want his right time to be. Because we have like microwave faith, right? We want it right here, right now. Burger King style. Have it your way right away. That's what we're looking for. But yet, in the incubator of time, God is refining you and purifying you and getting ready for your advancement, your comeback. That setup is not go- that setback is not going to stop you from God's destiny and dreams for your life. God promises to promote and advance you at the right time because God's strong hand is on you. I'm so thankful that God's hand's on our lives, aren't you? I don't know where I'd be without the hand of God. Come on, somebody. I don't know where I'd be. I don't know what I, I don't know how I'd survive anything I face today. If I did not have God, I don't know how people make it without God. But with God, I remember this expression as a kid. I can run through a troop, leap over a wall, hallelujah, with God. That's the only way we could do it, is with God. If you've got God, you've got all you need. You don't have to have the right education. You don't have to have a million degrees after your name. You don't have to have the right given name because, well, I don't know. I don't have the right credentials. I don't, I, nobody trained me. No, you, all you need is God. If you have God, you have all you need. He'll promote you. He will advance you. Nothing can stop you when God's hand on you is on you. Not the economy, not a bad break, not a setback, not a mistake, not an attack of the enemy. What you believe is holding you back is often preparing you for your destiny. What you think is only an attack is often an advance. And that's why you can never put a lid on your potential. 
Stop talking yourself out of the plans of God. Stop talking yourself down. I don't deserve his blessings. I don't want to talk myself out of the blessings. I want to talk myself into them. I want to be in a position myself to receive God's blessings. But if I keep thinking I'm not good enough, here's what happens. God will open up a door for you. You've been praying, God, give me a new job. God opens up a door, and here's what the insecure person says. I'm not qualified. No, you are qualified because God has anointed and appointed you. His strong hand is on your life. Stop putting a stop on your dreams. Refuse to allow anything to get you to tap out on God's plan for your life. Paul, he's praying for the Colossian church, and he says this, you, uh, we also pray that you will be strengthened with all his glorious power, so you will have all the endurance and patience you need. You ever wonder how you get through things? It's God. He's given you the endurance and the strength you need. May you be filled with joy. I'm just declaring that right now for Comac. May you be filled with joy. Everybody just smile. Come on, Hicksville, smile for a second. May you be filled with joy. For he, always thanking the Father, he has enabled you to share in the inheritance that belongs to his people who live in the light. Here's the promises. You will be strengthened when you are weak. You will endure when you don't think you can. You will be filled with joy when life around you is miserable. And here it is. Don't miss this because he has enabled you. Church, hear this thing. He has given you every gift, every calling, everything you need to be who God designed you to be. He's already given it to you. Stop wearing the mask of being unqualified. God has enabled you to do what he made you to do. Stop putting a lid on your life. Don't put a lid on your prayers, your hopes, and your dreams. Don't put a lid on your marriage, your children, or your destiny. Don't put a lid on your finances, your occupation, or your freedom. Never put a lid where God has given you liberty. Never put a lid there. You are free to pursue your purpose. You are free to dream again and become all that God has designed you to be because you are filled with potential. Well, just, can you just say that out loud? I am filled with potential. I am filled with potential. Come on. In unison, I am filled with potential. Come on, Hicksville, one more time. Come on. I am filled with potential. I love what Charles Stanley said many years ago. He said, if you truly want to pursue and reach your full potential, then you must face up to two truths. Truth one, God has placed more within you than you realize. Truth two, you likely have settled for the life you have now. Well, that's tough. God's saying, I've got limitless supply of what you can do. But then somewhere in the journey, we stop and we settle. Let me ask you a question, Church Unleashed. Are you living for a settled life? Are you putting a lid on your potential because of the way you see yourself? Hear this today. God has more in store for your life than your wildest dreams could ever see. Than any of your hopes. God has bigger and more. Don't hide behind the mask. Don't let the lid determine your level. Dust off the ashes of the past. Push through the wreckage of your history. And you will see your God-given destiny. You are made in the image of God. You have royal blood in your veins. God has a destiny that hell cannot stop. You're a child of the Most High God. See yourself the way God sees you. When you get up in the morning and you go into that restroom and you look in that mirror, you just say, I am a son or daughter of the Most High God. I'm blessed by God. I read this recently. 38-year-old housewife, she would go to the movies and sigh and she said this, if I only had her looks, maybe I could do something with my life. 38-year-old housewife, would go to listen to a singer and she'd moan this. If I only had her voice, 
maybe I could do something with my life. Then one day someone gave her a copy of a book called The Magic of Believing. She stopped comparing herself with actresses and singers. She stopped crying about what she didn't have and started concentrating on what she did have. She took inventory of herself and remembered that in high school, she had a reputation for being the funniest girl around. So she began to turn her liabilities into assets. When she was at the top of her career, Phyllis Diller made more than one million dollars a year. She wasn't good looking. She had a scratchy voice, but she could make people laugh. <sighs> Stop trying to be somebody else. Stop trying to fit in somebody else's mold. See yourself the way that God sees you because your life is not an accident. What you think is only attacking you is actually advancing you. And that's why you can never put a lid on your potential. Don't live in regret. Imagine your life the way God designed it to be.